Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, June 22nd, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I brought up a quick diary today introducing our new uh, domain name API. This is something I have been playing with for a while and um, probably tweeted about it at least, but wanted to sort of formally introduce it to allow you to play with it as well. The idea is that it allows you to look up the age of a domain, basically, when was it first registered? Now, we don't always have the first registered date. We call it first seen date when it basically was added to our database. As a data source, we use data from registrars. We also use certificate transparency uh, logs and a couple other things. So give it a try, uh, see if it works for you. There are really uh, two API endpoints here. One allows you to look up uh, the first seen date for a particular domain. The second one allows you to look up all the domains that uh, were first seen on a particular day, but that only goes 30 days back. So this is kind of meant for bulk lookups or imports for individual domains. Uh, the first API that I mentioned that just returns the age. Still a bit work in progress. We also try to add some other data to uh, this domain information, but uh, give it a try and let me know uh, how it works for you. More details in the diary from today. If you're concerned about operation technology or OT networks, often also uh, put together sort of with ICS or industrial control networks, then you should look at a report released by Forescout where uh, they are summarizing 56 different vulnerabilities that they found in devices from 10 major vendors. One third of the vulnerabilities are allowing a compromise of credentials. There are 21% that allow firmware manipulation, essentially things like unsigned firmware and the like, and then 14% allow for remote code execution. They're calling all of this sort of an examples of insecure by design issues, in part also because many of these vulnerabilities are pretty straightforward and basic, like sort of things like default credentials, unsigned firmware, and then they also have nine vulnerabilities related to unauthenticated protocols. The summary of the report also makes the point that uh, these devices often do have some form of security certification so that security certifications are somewhat lacking in finding some of these or even considering these simple vulnerabilities in scope. So no real surprise for many who have worked in OT for a while, sadly, and also a lot of, for example, passwords being transmitted across the network in the clear, use of Telnet, even sometimes without authentication, all of these very kind of typical, sadly, vulnerabilities for these type of devices. Now, Forescout did work with respective vendors in order to address these vulnerabilities and also did a coordinated release today, which sort of the result is this report. And of course, one can only imagine how many more similar vulnerabilities are out there. Uh, Forescout is not the first company looking for these vulnerabilities. So uh, there are probably plenty more to find. If you are in the OT space, then please take a look at the report and well, maybe it gives you ideas to look for these vulnerabilities yourself in some other vendors devices that were not covered by the, this report. And if you got up early this morning, at least as far as uh, the US is uh, concerned, you may have noticed a fairly widespread outage with a Cloudflare this morning. Of course, that affect many different sites. Uh, so much of the internet these days is behind Cloudflare. Well, uh, to Cloudflare's credit, they published an amazingly detailed uh, incident report about this. Take your pick uh, between uh, TLS, DNS, and BGP. What was the problem? Well, of course, it was uh, BGP, the Border Gateway Protocol. And if you are 
in security for more than a couple of weeks, you probably realized that a lot of people are concerned about PDFs and scanning PDFs is a big deal and sort of a very important security control. Well, it appears that Adobe Acrobat thinks a little bit differently. Researchers at Minerva Labs found that uh, Adobe Acrobat is actually actively blocking some antivirus tools from scanning PDFs it processes. But of course, uh, PDFs can still be scanned while they're not being processed by Adobe Acrobat. Uh, what also caused an issue here is that blocking antivirus processes like this is often associated with malicious uh, software. So Minerva actually had a hard time distinguishing uh, this noise from actual malicious behavior. And in good news, 7-Zip, a fairly popular third-party extraction and compression uh, tool, now supports the mark of the web, which means that if you are downloading a zip archive and then extracting it using 7-Zip, the files being extracted will also be marked as downloaded from the web. You have to download the latest, greatest version, version 22, in order to get support of the for this new feature. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.